Hey guys, this is another episode of Full Disclosure from InfinityExist.com. I'm Tho, this is Knox and Patchy, and they're going to tell you about SQL injection. All right, SQL, or SQL injection, is a technique that exploits the database layer of an application. Um, the vulnerability is present when user input is not properly filtered, um, allowing a user to manipulate the SQL statement. Um, a SQL statement is basically a command sent to the SQL server to create, retrieve, or change data um, from the database. Uh, SQL statements are in, embedded in uh, programming languages to make it easier to access data for like forms and things like that. All right, for the first attack, what we're going to do is show you a simple login bypass using SQL injection, and then we're going to go into a little more advanced attack using SQL, which allows us to retrieve MD5 hashes from uh, the web server database. All right, whenever you log into a website, your username and password are included in an SQL statement and checked against the username and password stored in the database. The statement will look like this. Basically, the statement says, select all columns from test table, where username equals the username you entered and password equals the password you entered. POST stands for a user input. Basically what we're going to show you here is just a standard login, a successful login with a username and password. As you can see, it was a successful login, gets us into the admin area, and an unsuccessful login gives you the error message of an incorrect login. Okay. Okay. Alright, for this first uh, bypass method, what we're going to do is we're basically going to comment out the username. So basically it just checks the username to the database and the username will obviously be there. These are a comment symbols used, a pound symbol, or two dashes. We're going to use the pound symbol here, as you can see. Basically, just comments out that password. This is what the statement will look like server side. So, as it goes into the database, as you can see, the password is commented out checks the username, and lets us in. All right, for this next login bypass, basically what we're doing is we're creating a logical truth with an OR statement. What we do is we add an OR statement to the end of the login, basically checks the username and password, it gives you an OR, and we put one equals one, which is a logical truth. If any of you have ever programmed, you know, an OR statement, it checks either one side of it or the other side, and because one equals one is true, it lets you in. And don't forget to comment out that last single quote. All right. All right, another way to do that logical truth statement is to use characters. It takes advantage of the single quote that we had to comment out before. We're just taking A equals A. You have to use a single quote around the characters. It's a logical truth, so it works like before. This login bypass SQL injection attack was made pretty much obsolete by a function called add slashes. Basically what it did is it added a backslash in front of any quotes that were inputted by a user. Uh, this was later added in, P in later PHP versions to automatically by default uh, run. So any uh, user input from like a, a get post or a cookie would add a backslash in front of any quote basically telling it that it was user inputted. However, in some situations, you can still use SQL injection attacks. Like, when the variable is meant to be used only for integers, uh, but they don't filter out characters. So you don't need a single quote in the statement. Um, that's what happens in our forms we use on our website. It's wp-forms. Um, basically, the variable user is used for, as an integer, but also as a character. But, so he doesn't filter out, um, filter out single quotes or characters or anything like that. Um, so we'll show you that attack. Alright, this SQL injection tag will allow us to extract data from the website's database. Um, first of all, you need to find a variable that is vulnerable. Um, so we'll be able to manipulate 
the st SQL statement. To do this, you can add a or one equals one dash dash. That's the other comment symbol that, that we talked about earlier. And basically, what that will do is we'll tell the database to return everything on every um, user. So when I enter that, as you can see, this user only has one post, or yeah, one post. When I enter it, it returns 48 posts, which means those are all the posts by every user. So that means um, that test was good. Also, you can test the false statement, which is and 0 equals 1, which is will always return false. So there should be 0 posts returned. And that, that happened, so we know this character is vulnerable. The next step would be to enter uh, unexpected data to hope for an error message. And as you can see, there was an error message, and it returned two SQL statements. Um, we're not going to focus on this top one too much, we're going to focus on this bottom one because it extracts all columns, as you can see from the asterisk wildcard. The top one uses count, which is just a single column. So now we know the SQL statement that's used on this website. Um, but also we know the information about the SQL server. In this case, it's MySQL, which will come in handy later. To extract data from the database, we will construct a union statement. A union statement adds an extra role to the current SQL query. Therefore, our union statement has to have the same amount of columns as the original statement. To find out how many columns are in the original SQL statement, use uh, the order by technique. Basically, you enter um, order by and then a number and then the comment and if there's no error, then you know that there has at least one column, then you go to, to two, and then you see there's an error, well, that's for the first statement so we don't need to worry about that. But there's no error in the second one so you know there's at least two, then we'll go to three, no error, so we know there's at least three, and we'll continue to do this until we get an error. Alright, there's an error on 8, so you know there's only 7 columns. Um, to test this, we're going to input a null union select statement. Basically, we're going to put in union select and then null, comma, null, comma, null, and then have a null for each column. Alright, as you can see, there's no error for our SQL statement. There is an error, but not for our SQL statement, so you don't have to worry about it. And here's the image of how this looks. See, as you can see, the last row is a row of all nulls. That's why you have to have the same amount of columns, or else it just won't work. All right. Now you want to find the column where, uh, so you can see the data easily. So we'll just put in a, a number for each one of these nulls. And as you can see, 2 shows up where the data should be. So that's where we want to put our, that's where we want our data to be extracted to, to the, the second column. So we need to do some research. Uh, we need to know where uh, password passes are saved. Uh, the good thing about WordPress is it's open source. So we can just look up information on the database and find out exactly what column the passwords are stored in and what table is stored in. Makes uh, life a lot easier. Just search it on Google. Google's a great source, so always use it. Alright, so you should, WordPress shows all its tables and all the information it has in it. Just look through all the information until you find what you want. Alright, as you can see, table uh, WP underscore users has the column user pass, so you can assume that's where the passwords are stored. Alright, now we need to craft our 
union select statement to extract the hashes. So it's going to be union select. The first one's going to be null because we don't want to output it into the first column. For the second column, we want to output our hashes, so we put in user pass. And then the rest are nulls. Then we put in from user underscore or WP underscore users, that's where that column's located. And then you do dash dash to count out the rest. There it is. Into this correctly, we should get all the password and passwords. And as you can see, there's four password and passwords. For this video, we uh, temporarily deleted all the other users, so we wouldn't be showing all you guys' this password patch down there, that'd be pretty bad. Alright, if you want to just see the admin, just put in a simple thing that says where id equals one, that basically says where um, the user is number one, and the first user is usually the admin. And only one was output, and that's the admin. Um, so basically all you have to do is crack that md5 hash, um, like we showed in our last episode. We'll do it real quick here. We're just gonna use Kane, um, go to Cracker, insert it into the MD5 hashes. And we'll just do a dictionary attack, see if that works. Alright, it cracked it. Password's infinity. Alright, now that you know the password, you can log into the website. You have full admin access. For WordPress, uh, the admin thing is just WordPress dash admin, and you just log in with admin. And then obviously, infinity is the password. There you go. Alright, I mentioned earlier that you can do more advanced attacks if you know the SQL Server. The SQL Server is MySQL, so we will be able to use the command load file to load files off the server. For this video, the website is being run on a Windows computer, so let's load in the boot.ini file. You basically start off your union state in the same way, but instead of putting the user underscore password in there, you put in load underscore file, and then the file you want to load, and then just all the other nulls for the rest of the columns. You don't have to put in a, a from and a table because it's not loading it from a table, it's just loading off the computer. But uh, like we said before, add slashes is on by default, so this will obviously not work if you have quotes around the boot dot ini. So there's another way to do, load this file and that is taking that file and put it into a, the hex value. You start off with 0x that, that represents a hex number. That's the boot.ini in a hex number. So there's no quotes. So it works and there's and you can see that's the output of the file. As far as we know this is a zero to exploit which means that all WP forms uh, using version 1.74 or earlier vulnerable to this attack. If you use WP Forms on your website, there will be a patch available on our website to download and to fix the problem. That's all we have for SQL Injection. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. We took a lot of time and effort to put into it to go into a really good detail so you guys can fully understand SQL Injection. Uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask on our website under the show notes portion of this episode. I am Knox, this is Tho and Patchy, and we will see you next time. Later.